Hi everybody, it's Rosemary here again um, with another story from my book, The Dirty Girl Coming of Age in a Hoarding House. Today, I'm going to tell you a story about something that happened when I was in middle school. So, growing up um, with my mother's hoarding problem that she had at that time, we pretty much could never have friends over to our house because, you know, our family, me and my mother, my sister, we were pretty much terrified that um, if somebody found out that me and my sister could be put into foster care. And I actually knew some kids who were in foster care. I had one friend, she was put in foster care because of some very serious problems in her family and then later she was adopted by someone who then abused her more and you know I I had heard either on the news or from friends of mine bad things that happened to kids in foster care and I was terrified about the idea of being taken away from my mother who I loved very much and um, being put into foster care so we really tried to protect our secret and not just the threat of going into foster care but we were very ashamed of how it was that we lived and um, really for a long time didn't want other people to know about it. So when kids would come over it would be more like maybe if we had first moved in to a new place and there was like the two week honeymoon period where things were still normal looking or um, a few times there were things like parties or campfire girls meetings which would take place on the front in the front yard and we would make excuses about not going inside. So, you know, I really didn't have certain um, kind of typical and normal childhood experiences like having your friend over after school or having some more parties at your house or things like that. Um, so, at one point, um, which was I think around the time between sixth and seventh grade, we moved into an apartment and before that, we had been in a house where we'd had a number of cats. And the cats, you know, would hunt things. You know, they would indoors and outdoors. You know, sometimes they'd bring back, you know, presents of, you know, dead animals that they had caught here or there. Um, and, you know, in our house, there weren't any other animals besides the cats, except for all the many, 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 many cockroaches that lived in that house. But when we moved into this apartment, we had to get rid of all of the cats because this apartment wouldn't accept pets. And so this apartment was like, it, it was an apartment building that was right in front of a cliff. And there were mice that got into this apartment building. And you know, the sanitation in our apartment was not great because of the hoarding. And so the mice kind of took over the apartment. Um, there were really a lot of mice. One day, I, one time I was actually going to try and clean the house. And there were some dishes that had sat in the sink for I don't know how many weeks or maybe actually months. And it was like stagnant water that really, really smelled foully but I had worked up the courage to like stick my hand in there to pull the plug and start over again and actually try to wash dishes even though I didn't even know what was the methodology for washing dishes but I was going to try and you know I was probably like 12 or 13 and um, and I remember going to the sink to you know to this horrible smell and I was sticking my hand in the water and then I saw that there was a dead mouse floating, like bloated and floating in the water and I just lost it. <laughs> I just ran screaming as far away out of that room as I could. But that's how many mice there were in this house that one could actually fall in the dishwater and drown. So there were a lot of mice and at night um, in my room, in my bed, you know, mice, night, mice are nocturnal. And so there were really the most active during the time of day that I needed to sleep. 
and fall asleep. And so I, I really remember every night, night after night after night, you know, I would see them start to get active, but then after I turned off the lights, they'd be even more active. And, um, you know, I had a twin size bed and right next to my bed, there was a small window and there was the string for the blinds, you know, that hung there. And I would watch mice crawling up and down that blind string. And they were like inches from me. And I was really terrified because it was like, it was like the monster under your bed, except these were real, <laughs> real monsters under my bed. And, and I could feel the vibrations because they were like, I don't know if they were inside a box spring or what. It, it felt as if they, it felt as if they were like Spider-Man that they could walk upside down. And if they were walking all along the underside of my mattress, it probably wasn't really that. It was probably some... Maybe it was like there was a box spring that was hollowed out and then they were inside of it. I don't actually know, but I could feel vibrations of mice um, underneath me, like vibrations being conducted through the bed that I was laying on. And you know, I would just think if only I can fall asleep, then I won't be as scared, this scared anymore. And this was every single night, every single night. I had to fall asleep like this with mice all around me and you know and I would try to tell myself well they're probably you know they say wild animals are more scared of you than you are of them like probably they'll stay away from me probably they know to stay away from me I would try to tell myself these things to like decrease the fear and um, so one night one, actually, while I was trying to fall asleep and thinking these things, I had my eyes closed. Um, I felt one run across my face. And for me, that was the last straw. I just knew right then and there that I could not keep, you know, living like this, at least that little piece of it, you know. Maybe I had to live in this house, but I couldn't live with that anymore. I had to find a solution. And I just sprang out of bed. Normally, I if I got up to turn on the light or something like that in the middle of the night, I was afraid that maybe there were going to be mice on the floor, that maybe they were going to run over my feet, that maybe I was going to step on one. But like the worst had already happened. So I just sprang out of bed. I turned on the light and I think that made them kind of hide a little bit. And I think I even used to try and sleep sometimes with the lights on just so they wouldn't, I don't know if that's a real memory or if I'm making it up now, but anyway, I turn on the lights and I decided, you know, I had to sleep somewhere else and everywhere in the house, um, you know, there were mice. And so the solution that I thought of that I think was a good solution was to go outside and sleep on the balcony. You know, the apartment had a outdoor balcony, like a wooden deck balcony. and that you could get to through the living room through a sliding glass door. So I, I believe that this was sometime in the spring. Maybe it would have been this time of year, like March. I'm not 100% sure. April, I have no idea. I think it was the spring because I don't think there was snow on the ground. And I don't, and it couldn't have been the summer because I was bundling up. It was definitely cold that I needed blankets and stuff, but it, I don't think it was so cold as to be snowing. So I think it was the spring. So I, I got dressed in as many layers as I could, um, you know, jeans, long sleeve shirt, maybe coats or jackets or something, I don't know. And I grabbed every, you know, we had like some foldable foam you know, like these chairs, they can be folded up as chairs or they could be stretched out and used as beds. Like usually I think they do if you have company, but in our case, sometimes we used them. So there was one of those and I took it out on the balcony. And then I went around and I looked for every blanket I could find, a spare blanket I could find in my room or the living room or wherever. And, you know, sleeping bags, 
blankets, all of that. And then I, coats, I think I got coats also. And so I went outside and I made this kind of nest for myself and I put, you know, I, I kind of covered myself in as many blankets as I could. It was kind of like camping. And so I had like an opening for my face and I tried to cover the rest of myself with blankets and stuff and I closed the cyan glass door. And that was a great feeling. I actually remember after I barricaded myself with all these blankets, covered myself up with all these blankets, it actually started to rain. <laughs> but it wasn't raining hard. It was more like um, a mist. It was more like it was sprinkling. And you know, I felt the I felt the water falling on my face and I did think, oh, what's going to happen if it starts raining now? Will I be forced back into the house? But actually, no, I was able to say, okay, no, this is going to be okay. I might have even had like a, I don't know if I had like a waterproof sleeping bag that I could put on top or if it was just like, okay, there's enough layers that if it doesn't rain hard, it's not going to get all the way to where my body is <laughs> and it'll just be the top layer that gets a little wet. But once I figured out that it was going to be a light rain, it actually felt nice and to be out in the fresh air. And it was really great to be able to declare independence from the house on that balcony. It was great to be able to liberate myself. It was great to be able to find my own solution and save myself from something that really was not tolerable for me anymore. And so I had a friend at school. Um, we'll call her Betsy. And God, I always think about that, like whose names do I have to change in my book? Like if I tell something personal about somebody, I know I have to change their name. But what about the other people that are just there and they didn't, like I kind of don't want to change anybody's names because I know them with those names and the names sound really good, but I don't know. Some people say you should change all the names, some people don't. I don't know. Do you guys have opinions on that? Anyway, Betsy um, was a friend of mine from middle school. And in the summer, I believe after seventh grade um one day she invited me over to her house so i think we were actually supposed to go to like vacation bible camp and then to her house something like that and so and i when i got to her house i met her mom who was a very nice woman and her little four-year-old sister who was adorable and I learned, hanging out with her there that day in her home, I learned that um, her stepfather, her sister's father, was in jail because he had molested her. And, you know, I think this was hard on her mom that, you know, had made a bad decision getting involved with someone who then later would abuse her child. And um, there were some family issues there, to be sure. Um, and. I noticed that their house kind of looked like ours. <laughs> and I always all my life thought that our family was the only family in the whole world who lived like that. And I was so ashamed of it. And I thought no one would be able to understand. And I could not believe, I just kept looking and saying, yeah, this really is like our house. You know, I'm sure there were differences. I don't know if it was a little better or worse or the same, or maybe the stuff was different. Maybe it was more clothes and less trash. I don't really know, but I do know that it was hoarded. <laughs> it was definitely hoarded. And what was really amazing to me was that they had allowed me in to that house that that mom was not too embarrassed to let her kid have friends over, like my mom was. And I just could not believe it. And I thought, oh my God, there really is someone else like us. And then, you know, we were talking and, you know, and the idea came up of having a sleepover. And normally if anyone ever suggested coming over to my house, I would have to deflect that and I would have to like find an excuse and say, oh no, right now 
our bathroom's not working or, oh, right now um, there's something going on and I can't have anybody over or, you know, I would have to think of an excuse. But this time I thought, well, you know, if she, if she was able to show me her house and it looks similar to my house, why can't I show her my house? Why can't I have her over to my house? So I called my mom and I said, we want to have a sleepover at our house tonight, but it's okay because believe me, I'm here in her house and it's just like ours. <laughs> I'm serious. And, um, and so my mom relent and said, okay. And, and this girl, Betsy, I warned her. I said, look, there's mice in my house, but we can sleep out on the balcony. And she was like, well, okay, I'm okay with that. It's okay. Although I don't know if she knew the extent of the problem. And so later on we did. We had a sleepover at my house. It was the only time I can remember in my life growing up having someone stay at my house. And so we slept out on the balcony. I think we got another foam mat we put out there and we had blankets and stuff. Because I, after that one night in the spring, I slept there every night. I didn't go back to my bedroom you know, anytime soon. As long as the mice were an issue, it did not go back to my bedroom. And um, so, it, but this was now summer. <laughs> so let's say it was from spring to summer at the very least. I think maybe somehow the issue got resolved before winter. So I don't remember ever sleeping there in the snow. But, um, you know, so I remember me and Betsy out on the balcony giggling and talking about boys and all the usual normal middle school stuff and the sliding glass door was closed and there were multiple mice all pushing their little faces up against the the um you know the glass wanting to get out where we were but they couldn't you know we were protected and i just remember saying wow there really are a lot of mice in your house and <laughs> it was just a comment you know, it, it wasn't someone who was coming from a radically different world who would be more shocked. It was just a matter of fact comment like, oh yeah, you guys have mice in your house. And I don't think it hurt me the way it would if someone else had seen someone from a clean house. So anyway, uh, that's the story I wanted to tell you today. What, can, what are some bigger points that we could get from this story? Well. I am proud of myself that I found a way to take myself, probably at 13 years old, out of that bad situation. And I'm glad that I was able to go out and sleep on the balcony. And I think that that made me feel independent and it made me feel like it's possible for me to take charge and get myself out of a bad situation and solve problems. Maybe I don't always get myself out of a bad situation soon enough, but um, I think it did give me the feeling that I can be in charge of my own life and have some power for myself. And, you know, if there's anybody watching this who's currently in, like if you're a kid who's stuck in a hoarding situation or maybe another bad situation, you know, maybe it isn't possible for you to completely escape that situation, but if you think creatively, I wonder if there could be a small way, something small that you could do to get a little bit out of the situation you know, to maybe avoid some of the worst parts of the bad situation that you might be in. You know, for me, it was sleeping on the balcony. You know, I tried also once to move out and live with a friend and that failed, but, um, but I was able in this case to sleep on the balcony. Well, think about it. Maybe there's some creative solution that you haven't thought of yet to being able to kind of, if you're waiting to turn 18 so you can really escape, Maybe in the meantime, you can escape incrementally. Um, other things, well, when you grow up in a hoarding household, I think it can be hard to like have some normal childhood experiences like inviting people or friends over. And so you really miss out on that experience being able to share what it is, what your daily existence is, what your world is, what your lifestyle is so that your friends can understand where you're coming from. And also, I think today it's not as much of a problem because of TV, but when I was a kid, 
we thought we were the only people in the world who lived like that. So it was really a revelation that there could be one other person. Now, if, you know, you're probably aware, you know, that your parents' problem is hoarding and that millions of people have that same problem. But for me, that was a pretty big deal to discover another hoarding family in our community. And I think, you know, being able to have a friend see what you're living with and understand you can make you feel validated and visible. And like for my friend to say, wow, there really are a lot of mice in your house. It's like, okay, for me, how great was that for someone to be able to understand what I was going through? You know, a problem that was really hard for me to deal with that was normally hidden. And I mean, we can also talk about issues of secrecy, but I think there are probably other stories that, um, that maybe illustrate that more. Okay, well, that was the story for this week. What I would hope you would take away from that is that even when you're in a bad situation, there might be a way to take charge in some small way and help, and help make things better for yourself. Because maybe other people are not going to help you or save you or make anything better, but maybe you can do that for yourself. And the other thing I would hope you might take away would be just the idea that um, it's good to be able to share things with friends and it's good to um, know that you're not alone. All right. Well, I hope you're having a good week um, and I'll talk to you next time. Bye.